Hey guys, Caleb Gessner here, Ducket Lad Dental CPAs and Advisors, bringing you another video in our Acquisitions Academy. Today I'm going to be covering the three common pitfalls we see dentists make when buying into their practice. And the first common pitfall we see is when a dentist overpays. Dentists overpays when they don't take a deep dive into the numbers. They don't hire a CPA to look at the numbers for them, uh, run the tape on, on what's going on in the practice, and they get into buying the practice six months, 12 months down the road, and they're not cash flowing what they expected to, or they're not you know, hitting those uh, collection numbers that they expected to. Typically, we see this happening when uh, they don't have a, a great understanding of the numbers uh, prior to buying in. So make sure you go out, hire the right CPA for you, uh, have them take a deep dive into the numbers and make sure you are on the same page as to what you would expect post ownership. Second common pitfall we see is the buying doctor is unable to match the selling doctor's production. And that in turn is going to uh, play into the, the first common pitfall of, you know, uh, not net cash flowing what you expect to. Talked about this a couple of weeks ago in the transferability uh, video, but making sure that you take time, look at the production report that the selling doctor has, make sure that those production numbers align with what you're able to do. A, a dental practice is only as good as the, the dentist itself, right? Not saying that hygiene and, and other aspects of the practice aren't important, but from a production standpoint, you have to be able to make sure that you are matching the selling doctor's production. If the, the selling doctor is doing you know, 180K, $200,000 in, in production a month, if you don't expect that you're going to be able to do that post closing and post you owning the practice, the, the finances and the, the, the net cash flow activity that you would expect, uh, I wouldn't expect that to be the same uh, net cash flow that the selling doctor had. So make sure that you're able to produce what the selling doctor is able to produce and make sure you're able to do the same procedures. You know, that client base that's there expects a certain level of service and a certain type of service from the, the previous doctor. Uh, you want to make sure that you're able to match those as well. And the third common pitfall we see is allowing emotions to get in the way of making a smart financial decision, a smart investment decision. You're, you may be buying your first practice. This may be your, your first walk or, or part of your journey to, to owning a dental practice and you're super excited. Uh, you just want to buy the first practice you see. would highly recommend you not uh, necessarily buying the first practice you see. Make sure that you have the right team around you, the right attorney, right lender, right CPA around you to, to guide you through this decision. It's, it's, it's a super exciting time in your life. You want to make sure that you're, you're buying the right, to, the, the right practice for yourself because, you know, uh, as, as a common saying in the, the, the dental world, you may have two wives, two husbands, multiple kids, multiple dogs, but most dentists only have one dental practice. You want to make sure you're making a right financial and investment decision. You want to make sure that you're not allowing your emotions to take over from the excitement, the fear, the stress of the decision. Make sure you have the right team of advisors around you when you make that decision. So as always, guys, uh, if you have any questions for us, go to DuckitLight.com, fill out a work together page. We'd love to have a conversation with you. And we'll see you soon.